we're going to talk a bit about uh, men-women relations. The thing that we have to recognize, of course, is that the relationship between men and women, or between a man and a woman, is not an isolated uh, situation. That the way you love one another, the way you love your girlfriends, your boyfriends, your husbands, your wives, your children, is rooted in a political social system. Love it just does not flow out of your heart. You know, and it's just not natural like we tend to think of it as being. It is influenced by your own experience as an individual as well as by your experience as a people. One of the reasons why I wrote the um, book, The Developmental Psychology of the Black Child, is the, the fact that I wanted to bring to people's attention that you just couldn't read a standard book on developmental psychology and apply what was found in that, in, in that book to the black child. Because black people have a unique history. It is the history of the black child is not the history of the white child. The history of the black parent is not the history of the white parent. The political social position that black people are in in this country is not the political p social position of whites. The psychology of black people flows from the history and experience of black people. If you went into a psychologist's office, he would want or she would want to know your own personal history. Because it is only through understanding your personal history as an individual that your behavior can be understood. A psychologist or psychiatrist could not take the history of another individual and, and just apply it to you and say, well, I know this other person very well, so therefore you must behave this way too. And the values they have and the ideas they have must be the same you have. The only difference between you and this other person is that uh, they have a different color from you. That is not the way psychology is built, ladies and gentlemen. You can only be understood as an individual in terms of your own history and experience. The, when we talk about then the psychology of black people, we must understand that psychology in terms of the experience of our people. You cannot go and get a psychology from another people whose history and experience has been different and just impose it upon yourself. You will create problems. And therefore, I looked at the history and experience of black people and talked about psychology in those terms. We must talk about education in those terms, business in those terms, and anything else that is relevant to us in those terms. We must recognize that the love relationship between the black mother and her child, between the black father and his child, between the mother and the fathers and the sisters and the brothers in the black family is shaped by the political social situation in which we as people live. And that has to be taken into consideration. So love, you see, under those circumstances does not just flow up out of the heart. It's influenced by uh, social political circumstances. If there was a difference in the family in terms of who was the darker or who was the lighter or who had the good hair or who had the bad hair. That means that racism in the political social system has entered into the parent. And the parent then transfers that racism even in the way he or she relates to the children onto the child and creates in that child then an attitude toward itself and toward the world that flows from being in a particular social political position. You see then when the white psychologist talks about uh, the parent and the child, they can talk as if it is the relationship between the parent and the child that makes the child what it is. However, when we talk about the black parent and the black child, we must talk about that black parent's relationship to the white world that black parents' political position in the world. How black people have been dealt with in this society must be consi considered. And all of these things influence to a good extent 
how that black parent is going to relate to his or her child, what they're going to say to their children, how they're going to prepare their children for life, how they are going to express their love or not love toward their children. So then you must understand then that love, what we call love, is shaped, created, and maintained by social political systems. Therefore, as you will see when we go through this lecture, you must see how then your social life and existence itself is going to influence the way you relate to your husbands, to your wives, to your boyfriends, to your sisters, and to your brothers. I want to talk a moment or two uh, in terms of uh, what we call um, the relationship between love and community. I want, to, I want us to understand that love between a man and a woman, or between a parent and a, and a child, thank you very much, is ultimately a gift to the community itself. Thank you, Karen. I have emphasized before that when you have a child, you just don't have a child for yourself. The child just does not belong to you as a mother or as a father. A child is born into a community of people. The child is a gift to the community because the child is not going to live in a world by itself. It's going to live in a community where it relates to other people. Its behavior is going to influence other people in the community. If it turns out to be a delinquent or crime-oriented, it's going to negatively affect the lives of other people. The community has to share in educating that child. The community has to share in supporting that child, feeding that child, providing jobs for that child, providing protection for that child. The community, if the child is, is, does not turn out well, has to provide rehabilitative services and supportive services and other kinds of services for that child. So then when a child is born, it is not only the responsibility of the parents who gave it birth, but it is also a community responsibility. And so consequently, when one has children, one must not only think in terms of the, uh, how the child is going to relate purely to the mother or the father that gave it birth, but also how it is going to relate to the people itself. A child must ultimately grow up to contribute to the community, to the community's ability to support it and to support its family, to protect its interest, because it is only with the community's support that the family and the child itself continues to survive. So we must keep in mind then that children are ultimately born to the community because they will influence the nature of the community. If the children that are born in the community are self-hating, as we will talk later on, or have problems with their identity, or self-control, or destructive and so forth, you will see a community that will fall apart a community that is at odds with itself, a community that is divided, a community that by its very nature will continue to destroy other children and other people. The greatest gift that a parent can give to a community is the gift of beautiful, healthy children, well-behaved children, children who know themselves, who have a firm identity, and so forth, children who are able to love healthily and love in a righteous type of manner. So in a sense, you may not be great or you may not be famous or you whatever, but we all have the potential of being good parents. And that is a major contribution to the advancement of a community and to, to its, its uh, survival. I say that also to say that love is a gift to the community as well. How well you love yourself as an individual, the sins of the first generation are visited now on, until the 14th generation. Often it will take sometimes three and four or more generations 
for a family to live out the hate between a mother and a father. The children get it, their children get it, their children's children get it, and it can go right on before it, uh, before it is finally worked through. Uh, the children's reactions to poor love relations between mothers and fathers can lead to their own personal problems, their own interpersonal problems with other people as well. Those problems sweep out into to the community. Children suffering from a feeling of a lack of love from their own parents may then deal with that by becoming delinquent in their behavior, by not reaching their own potentials, by not uh, functioning in schools the way they should, by themselves getting into trouble, by themselves becoming impregnated at a too early age, and so forth. And this in itself affects community services, community resources, the kind of community that the individual lives in. So when we love as men and women, as sisters and